Hey guys, it's a Fujoshi Commentary here, and today I wanted to talk about something that's kind of gaining like mainstream notoriety as well as sort of mainstream hate lately. I really didn't think I would end up having to do this video so soon, and when I did plan on doing this, it was more so to do for a recommendation list for like psychological or horror based yaoi manga or manhwa, but it seems like I'm gonna have to go ahead and make this video to to kind of clear up misconceptions and sort of random assumptions about a story that really has more merit to it than people are willing to give it, if they've even read it at all. So by the title of this video, we're talking about the newer, sort of slowly rising manhwa known as Killing Stalking. Now before I get into why I am defending the linguistics of this anime and the structural plot and how the pairing that is getting so much hate uh, for this manhwa, I'm actually going to give a discretion to the fact that there are going to be spoilers in this sort of review breakdown of the manhwa. I kind of have to in order to explain my point of view and getting it across because my goodness, it seems like such misguided hate and I can sort of tell by a lot of this hate is that people have just straight up not read this manhwa. They've literally just read the caption title of the manhwa and they've seen a few fans in the yaoi verse uh, shipping them. Now, one of the reasons why I'm even making this video is because this happened to a friend of mine. When I recommended this manhwa to her, I gradually read this manhwa on my own about a few weeks before it actually hit like scanlation and mainstream sort of manga sites. So this, I was actually reading and like invested in this series way before it got known to most people even in like the yaoi circle. And I recommended it to a friend of mine. I had recommended other manhwa and manga to her before and she loved it. She was in love with it. She loved the story and how it was going. And she particularly loves the two main characters and how they are essentially a item together. I wouldn't say sort of a relationship because it really isn't a relationship and that's the entire point of the story, but she enjoys that sort of aesthetic about them and how they are written in the actual series. And the main character is basically highlighted, his name is Young Boom. And Young Boom is basically a man who has graduated from university, he's been on the active duty draft for the military to do his time served, and he's basically living with his uncle in a house, and he is just living his everyday life, but he has a secret that he dare not tell anyone, and that is he has fallen for the strapping young lad known as Sung Woo. He is seen in his vision as the perif of perfection, in which we see in the manga we understand why. Because he was crushing on him in university when they went. He went to university four years later than most people, so he was a bit of an outcast, a loner, and he basically saw him, and he was in the same like active duty platoon as him, and Sung Woo literally saved Boom from being basically gang raped and assaulted in the military because he notified a sergeant and basically saved his life. So Boom has this sort of blind infatuation and devotion to him as he even finds him after they've like left and broken ties in the military. So he's just kind of following him around. They meet in different sort of places but Sung Woo has no idea that Boom has been following him, knows where he lives. And it starts off with him trying to get into his house through a padlock key. and. A a lot of like, you know, heart stopping things happen there with the whole situational irony and things like that. And it turns out that he sort of lies to get the officers that were approaching him in the beginning of the story off of his back. And he sneaks into this man's house. <laughs> Boom is just, he's become a stalker at this point, which is kind of the point of the manhwa. He has literally broken into this guy's house, sniffing his clothing and things. And when Sung Woo returns home upon finding out that somebody has tried to get into his house, he essentially tries to hide, discovers a girl who has been 
gagged, tied up, and essentially just like, you know, beaten beyond recognition. It's something that looks literally out of a crime story or a crime movie. And he tries to untie her and he basically gets beaten upside the like side of his body with a bat. And he's, this shows that shocking side of Sung Woo that Boom would have never imagined. And it basically, not down spirals, but the plot leads on from there. As we see the woman dies is murdered by Sung Woo and for some reason Sung Woo takes a certain level of pity and gentleness towards Boom after Boom had confessed to him that he loved him and you know sort of just a full-on thing but it's mostly because Boom for some reason reminds Sung Woo of his mother whom both Sung Woo and his mother were abused by his father, and which you see in the manhwa, which symbolizes in different ways with the table and the fact that Boom, once he is led upstairs from the basement quarters in the closet, which was completely passed through on there, it is a sort of weird psychological game of cat and mouse, what will happen, what's going to happen. It's a heart-stopping thriller manhwa. Case in point, this manhwa literally can go three million directions and is structured to literally keep you on your toes, suspenseful guessing, because you never know. Because in one part of the manhwa in around chapter 7, you are seeing him just basically, chapter 7 to chapter 10, they have connected it seems, it seems they're trying to sort of live a sort of normal life despite Bum being in the actual story, being a considerably captive person by a serial killer, Sung Woo. Which could lead back into the fact that he's actually accused by one of the officers who doesn't trust him of killing his parents. This guy is legitimately a serial killer and the fact that you kind of see some normalcy put between with some Stockholm Syndrome, yes, there are absence of abuse and things like that. Boom is in a position where he is captive by some, some could say because of his own sort of predator-like behavior because of his obsession with Sung Woo, he kind of caused this to happen. I'm sure that most people would think that yes, they wished in another world, they feel sorry for Yoon because if you see Boom's backstory and how he was treated, any sort of like loads of affection he would give. There are flashback sequences made where when he was like really small in grade school he took a girl's pencil. Typically boys they want to show that they like someone they'll kind of do little stuff to annoy girls like they'll uh, have the, say they have cooties or something like that or they'll tease them or they may take something you know it, because they're very awkward in showing their emotions at that age. He took a girl's pencil and a teacher it shows the frame of a teacher scolding him saying you took his girl's pencil then it's as he's growing up there's a girl that he seems we possibly confess to saying that he was disgusting don't ever see her again don't come near her again and then it got to the point where he was older that he had even a restraining order against him this dude has had no luck with love no luck with any sort of compassion his home life is extremely abusive I don't understand why nobody is really talking about the fact that he has had an abusive home life um, he has lived in, like, he lives with his uncle. He even told Sung Woo that he lived with his grandparents, and then somehow that transitioned to him living with his uncle, and his uncle sexually abuses him, which is why he has scars on his wrists, which I believe are dedicated to like actual ropes and things and then he's like he self-harms himself because he was just so miserable. And it is easy to see from Boom's perspective that Sung Woo is basically a pillar of light in his lonely and isolated little perif bubble that he calls his life. And then the fact that Sung Woo actually showed him an ounce of kindness when he confessed and he felt like he was going to be killed and Sung Woo actually like pet him on the head. He just pet him on the head and sort of gave him like a half, sort of half-hearted like petting even though he was still in a way cruel, he acknowledged his existence and didn't just completely push him away. But that is because Sung Woo is a sociopath and can literally switch personalities at like a slip of a hat. He's multiple personality disorder as from what we see and he is very mentally unstable but he can play the role of whatever he wants to get that sort of ramification from his victims, hence why he's so good at being a damn serial killer. And a lot of people relate to that, and I think a few people wish 
just out of the sheer seeing what this plot is giving us, that they sort of wish in the ounce of mind, especially since the author gives us this glimmer of like hope that, oh, maybe, maybe Sun kind of is changing, especially when you see a panel of him actually like showing an emotion of genuine flustering and sort of innocence, I guess you could say, that he was a little bit vulnerable. He met himself be vulnerable for a few minutes around boom. People see that as, hmm, I really wish this would work out for him. I feel kind of sorry for him. It's a way to pull your heartstrings. It's extremely good writing. And some people who just haven't read this manhwa yet and are just seeing a few people, such as maybe my friend who actually has been talking about it, and the fact that there's all this different sort of, you know, hype over it, are just saying, oh, you know, that's just cringeworthy. And I don't think that they've even picked up the manhwa at all. I guess to make a long story short, I am defending any sort of acknowledgement or even a little rooting for this pairing, not as it's not Fujoshi bait, it's an actual yaoi manga with a actual gay character who is infatuated with a man who, I mean, he's presumably straight, but as we see later in the chapters closer to the end of the scanlation of chapter 11, this man, he goes to gay bars. Like, he's now switching sexualities up. He probably is more, though, bisexual now, but he's going to gay bars now. It's kind of like the aesthetic that you kind of wish. You're looking at it from Bum's point of view because the story is told from Bum's point of view. And it's kind of like you really wish that he would find Find happiness and not saying that you support domestic abuse. I don't think anybody supports the fact that Boom is in a dangerous situation. Some people wish that the story was written better or maybe that the fact that he wished Sung Woo wasn't an asshole and he was just the idealistic perfect little bubble that Boom has imagined him to be because that is an actual human emotion that you really would want people who you looked up to to be exactly what you envision them to be. But this is a work of fiction again. It's not advocating any sort of domestic abuse. It's not romanticizing the sort of Joker and Harley Quinn aesthetic or Stockholm Syndrome. It's simply excited over the pairing and how the story is leading between the two. And it's kind of funny because now fans are getting into a little bit of role playing and I can even look at some of these comments on manga go and nobody is really like advocating for them a lot of people even want like sung woo to be like killed like they they really hate this guy but they can't really just be completely mad at it because he's sort of a comfort to boom because he's so emotionally broken both of these people are emotionally broken but it just happens to be Boom is just the more victim because he hasn't killed anyone. And then the whole point of it getting more and more twisted. I will say for the Raws, I've, I've read, it gets a little more into the more homoerotic side. That's also another point I would like to bring up in regards to the actual uh, story and plotline. The actual relationship between Sung Woo and Boom, it alternates. It's not just, oh, I love you, you're a male, you know, this is my, this is the man I've always wanted. It's not just a mindless, sex-driven manhwa about two guys having sex. Like, it doesn't even happen. The most thing that happens is maybe, like, a quick blowjob. And it's not even a blowjob. It's like a hand job and then a blowjob, but it's very short scenes. And it only makes up about 45% of the story. The actual, like, other half comes from the officer's point of view, who is investigating and, like, really suspicious of Sung Woo. And in regards to the actual suspense and the mindset of Sung Woo himself, it's not just about Boom and Sung Woo's relationship. But it is a sort of excitement that is given into the Yaoi verse because this is a Yaoi. It's not Fujoshi bait, it's not Yuri on Ice, it's not some sports anime that's trying to lure you in. This manhwa is straight up a Yaoi, but it's a tragic Yaoi. It's something you would compare to Liche Hikari Club, or something like the anthology of Yami BL. These stories aren't meant to be happily ever after, and it certainly 
certainly not meant to be sugar coated and oh this is this is this is this is cute nobody is saying that they're simply just looking at what it is and maybe even trying to distance themselves from this and it's like a harsh reality there are a lot of people in relationships where it is abusive or they're obsessed with someone and then they come to find out don't meet your idols that these people are crazy and it's just a sort of aesthetic it's just the sort of thing that people have to live with and for some Fujoshi's it may even hit home and I just think people need to read the killing stalking manhwa and actually judge for yourself what you think and I don't think that the fandom is ruining this manhwa and this is someone who basically anytime I see a fandom being cancerous I'm one of the first people who actually calls it out and says listen th this shit's getting a little too much. I've only seen, the only person I've seen really or a few people I've seen is actually on forums of the um, discussing, on forums discussing killing stalking where they actually just talk about the theories and what they think is going to happen and a few fangirls or a few fanboys wishes that Sung Woo would realize his mistake, realize that him killing isn't going to change what he's done or change his emotions, it's not going to help him in any sort of way, and come to his senses, turn himself in, or you know what not, or you know sacrifice himself to allow Boom his freedom, you know sort of try to make it into some sort of sappy-ish kind of you've given me light too sort of thing which I can't 100% knock because a lot of these stories can have that aesthetic it's a work of fiction fiction can go anywhere you want it to but I see the same people complaining who probably went to see Suicide Squad and would have probably complained if the Jared Leto Joker would have decided to hit Harley at the club and abused her in various other scenes that were cut from the final film and or went to go and waste money to see Fifty Shades of Grey. Bottom line, if you're someone who's extremely skeptical about wanting to read this manhwa because you're worried that it's going to be cringeworthy, the fans are going to be just horrible, there is a very definite possibility with any sort of like fandom or any sort of thing that gains popularity that it could become cringeworthy. But for the most part, as what I've seen, and I've been someone who's actually been reading this manhwa, engaged in the community way before it was even garnered as popular, it's not being that way now. Like, I think people are just getting a little too hung up on the fact that there's like a gay couple. And it's not even the people who are recognizing who are like in the yaoi community and the shonen eye community it's the people who are on the outside and don't really engage in it much they just haven't read anything i've saw somebody like who was bashing the series or bashing the fandom saying that it was an anime and that it was from japan when it's not it's just a korean comic book and it actually has gotten pretty good acclaim in korea and it, they're not really trying to promote this narrative Nobody is saying that Boom should stay with an abusive Sung Woo. They're just wishing that it would maybe be a little bit better, but it's not. And as we're reading it, theories will arise. There will be probably people who may sympathize with them. But it's not like the whole fandom is saying this or they're condoning it. It's just like anything else. You pick and choose. And I don't think it's fair to completely just outs Fujoshis or outs the Yaoi community when they haven't really done anything yet. I'm all for calling people out, but you don't have to over embellish and extremely blow up the community. We get enough hate stigmatizing and things as it is. That's one of the reasons why the creator refuses to put any sort of shonen eye label on Yuri on Ice despite following the formula to a T. It's people who just don't really understand or look into an actual story and just assume, oh my gosh, it's a gay couple. Fans are talking about it. It must be shitty. Let's just chill out. Read Killing Stalking. It's amazing. And if you don't really think Killing Stalking will be your cup of tea, but you do like sort of psychological crime, thriller, horror, and gore, I 
recommend wholeheartedly a manhwa called Bastard. It's very popular. It's longer than Killing Stalking right now. It's pretty good and hot off the presses. You can read it for free on Webtoons and I will link in the description where you can read on Webtoons and if you don't want to read on Webtoons I also have a manga site where I read all my yaoi manga and manhwa. Or you can also read from desktop, phone, tablet, whatnot. All linked in the description down below. So that being said guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Video. What did you think of what I was saying? Do you agree that killing stalking isn't really trying to romanticize or trying to glamorize domestic abuse? Or do you agree that you don't think yaoi fans who you've seen are trying to bring it up and glamorize it to something better than what it actually is portrayed in the story? Do you think I'm wrong in what I'm saying? Do you think that there is actually like a lot of people in the fandom who's doing it? If so, please let me know. I'm down and open to have a conversation about it. So that being said, guys, peace, love, and stay grooving, humans. Happy 2017. Bye!